Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to look at integer multiplication, division, and modulus operations uh, using double words as a homework example, activity, whatever, you, depending on where you see this, this is where it's coming from. So here is the problem, or here are the three problems. You're going to be writing helper functions, you know, library functions, so you can do multiplication, division, and modulus operations you know, pretty much without having to think too much about it for from here on in. So what I think, what I would love to be able to do is do something like this and say move uh, 14 into EAX, move 7 into EBX, call uh, some function called multiply, I'll just call it multiply, you know, mul I don't want to, because I'll do multiplication, hey, I spelled it right. And then the EAX register will return and then I can call write int and I should get 98. That would be great if I could get something like that to, to pop up. Let me just put a call uh, wait message here. And um, that would be awesome. And then if I had a function called multiplication, hey, I did it twice in a row. I should go get a lottery ticket. And then I put a ret and I put multiplication, hey, three in a row, my goodness, and p. So like I would love to have 98 come out of this. So I can re, you know, clean this out, run this, just make sure, you know, whatever. Nothing's going to print correctly, right? What comes up? Oh, 14 comes out. Oh, yeah, 14 comes out of this because I'm setting 14 into EAX, and then I'm not doing anything, and then I'm calling the right int function. And just here I will do the call uh, CRLF just to, just to have that as well. And there we go. So now we can see the number as we're expecting to see it. So um, a lot of people put a lot of code into this. There's really not, not much that has to go on because uh, go back and review the PowerPoints, go back and review my previous videos on multiplication, division, and modulus, especially with double words, that you're using the entire EAX and the entire EDX register to do this job. And EAX is already filled, is already filled in with one of the two values that I'm going to be multiplying and EBX is the other one, and so all I really have to do up front at least, just to get this thing working, at least, you know, is to just say IMUL EBX, and I'll get 98. 98 will pop up, and there we go. And so the, there really isn't much to this, because it's multiplication, it's already kind of working for us, but the thing is, again, the EAX register gets returned, that's what's going on, but the EDX register is also modified. So all I have to do here is something like this. Push the EDX register on the stack, do my multiplication, put it back, and return. And you won't notice, again, you won't notice anything. The program to you runs exactly the same, but now I don't have to worry when I call multiplication, I don't have to worry about anything but the EAX register being uh, modified by the, by the function itself. EBX will stay the same, EDX will stay the same, everything else will stay the same. Four lines of code, and half of it is just pushes and pops, and it, the, the actual multiplication is just one of the lines of code. All right, so moving on now to IDIV. Well, what would happen if I did sign like this, right? Division. <laughs> Excuse me. Oop. Oh, there goes my... There goes my string of spelling non-mistakes, division, uh-oh, man, I talked too big of a game for this. And so what would happen here, division, so what would happen if I did this, and what do I come out with? I get an un unhandled exception, integer overflow. And again, go back into your PowerPoints, your notes, your videos, whatever, and what, what turns out that we need the EAX register and the EDX register the same way, but we have to make sure that we fill in, uh, we fill in everything as it's supposed to. And that's where the CDQ comes from. Now everything should work fine. I should get my two now. There's my two. And again, what CDQ does, it's a, it's a fancy little thing here. I mean, it, for what it looks like, it just looks like it's such a little, little whatever, but it fills in it takes whatever's in the EAX register and it fills in the EDX register, basically signs, you know, with the sign extension. It's basically a sign extension. 
So if it's a positive value, this, the EDX register gets filled in with zeros. And if it's a negative value, it gets filled in with ones. And so that way the math can be done properly. Because again, what, what, we, what just went wrong here is if we don't do this, the EDX register is just filled with garbage and it completely throws off our calculation. And what you saw there, at, at best, you get a wrong answer. And at worst, you get a crash. And so 14 divided by 7 is going to get me 2 here. And that's correct. And so finishing up the job here is modulus. So everything kind of builds off one everything here. It's, you know, if I now if I change this, what am what am I expecting to see? I'm expecting to see a, a zero. 14 divided by 7, keep the remainder, is two remainder zero. So I expect. If I, if, the, if I did this right, I expect to see a zero come out of this thing. And, and I still see the two because I'm still doing an iDiv and whatever. But modulus falls under the, the division side of things. So I have everything working right, but when you do the operation, the EAX register holds the quotient, the whole number of the division, and the EDX register holds the remainder. So all I have to do to finish this thing up is move EDX into EAX, and I will get my zero value. And if I do this with anything, you know, it depends, you know, let's try to keep it simple. 22 divided by 5, the remainder will be 2. And so you can, come on, computer. And there's my 2. And you can keep on going, but, you know, so it's, everything's kind of been an extension. This has been four lines of code, and this has been five with the addition of CDQ. And then this modulus is 6 with the addition of the movement from the EDX register into the EA register. Because again, our contract says that if we are going to write C++ or write functions in assembly language, uh, that we have to return that, the, the return value goes into the EAX register. So that pretty much covers everything that we needed to do for this. And in the homework example, we will see this because we need this to do the homework. So I'm going to do that right now for you guys and have that ready for you on, uh, for you know, when you finish up your homework assignment. But if I ha uh, you have any questions or concerns, as always, please comment below or get back to me at swordb at cod.edu. So thanks for sticking it out with me as always. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time.